All right, so today I want to discuss the sonometer experiment to find out the value of the frequency of the AC signal. The biggest problem you will face in this experiment is the lack of class 11th knowledge. You will not be able to answer any Viva question if you do not understand class 11th concepts of stationary waves. So the first section of my video is completely devoted to class 11th. Please listen to this very, very patiently. Otherwise, you cannot do this uh, experiment and also you will not be able to answer the Viva questions. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, today, I will talk about the sonometer experiment and there is a reason why I am talking about this experiment. You know, from the experience I have had uh, and when I was also a student of class 12th, sonometer experiment in class 12th physics uh, to measure the frequency of the alternating current was hard, very difficult for me. And, and I found generally the students avoid this experiment. I'll tell you the reason why this happens. And why I picked up this topic today is because this experiment involves the knowledge of class 11 waves. If you don't know class 11th well enough, you know, you don't, you don't understand class 11th, uh, the chapter of waves, uh, where they teach you interference and stuff like that, you are not able to do this experiment. This experiment is very simple. The problem is class 11 physics, especially the chapter of waves. This is why I have picked up this topic. Uh, I know a lot of students are preparing for practical examination or will be appearing for practical examination. This will benefit you in two ways. You know, you will come to know what uh, what is the exact concept or the principle used in this experiment? The second thing you will learn probably is if you're preparing for an entrance examination, it may be a good revision for you uh, for your entrance examination when it comes to the chapter of waves. Now, I will not get into great details of waves, but I will definitely tell you the details which are important for a class 11 student to do, you know, class 12 student. To be able to do this experiment, I will tell you where are the students confused and today agenda is to remove that confusion. Okay, So first of all, understand this, that this experiment is based on class 11. Okay? And what happens in class 11th is you have a chapter which is called as the chapter of waves, right? If you, if you recall your class 11th, you have a chapter which is waves right so you study a chapter of waves in waves there is a topic that is studied and this topic is called as the topic of interference okay interference okay i will briefly tell you what interference is just for the purpose of recall so if you recall in interference you have two waves okay first of all these two waves are of equal frequency this is very important point these two waves are of equal frequency okay and they are traveling in the same direction they travel in the same direction both the waves are the sinusoidal waves sinusoidal waves okay what happens is that when these two waves travel in the same direction so let me just draw a small diagram Okay, so that you you can recall what you studied in this chapter. Okay, so if you have these two waves, these are sinusoidal waves. They follow generally what is mentioned is a sine graph. Okay, so they are drawn like this. Okay, so they are drawn like this. So this is, for example, the wave number one and wave number two. There are two waves and this could be probably another wave. Same frequency, but the difference being maybe the you know, there is a phase difference between them now when they move in the same direction they move in the same direction they produce a pattern these two combine okay these two combine these waves are sinusoidal waves these wave combine they combine and they produce what is called as an interference pattern now, interference you may know because if you're a class 12 student, you know that there is in wave optics, there is an interference. Like th there is a so when these two waves 
meet each other they result in a pattern called as interference there are two types of interferences that happen when these two wave number 1 and wave number 2 meet first pattern is called as interference which is there are two i told you one is the constructive interference okay so constructive constructive the other is called as destructive i hope this is making sense and you can understand if you have done your young double slit experiment something very similar is happening these waves are also uh, you know if if it's a string you know if you do the experiment of interference in a string which is a wire the waves are long are transverse waves okay sound wave experiment where sound is used are longitudinal waves where wires are used where the waves travel in the wire the waves are the transverse waves so this is one of the questions they can ask you in a sonometer experiment the waves are transverse or longitudinal the answer is transverse waves okay so this is the basic of of sonometer experiment but this is not the only one the next topic which i will tell you is the real basic so in a in a con constructive interference scenario the amplitude of the wave is very high the resultant wave so okay so when these two combine uh, and they interfere they produce what is called as a resultant right they, and you know from young double slit experiment so a resultant gets created there are two types of resultants you know one is the constructive and the destructive wherever you see the constructive interference the amplitude of the resultant wave so the final wave which gets created the amplitude is very high right the the amplitude so this is the amplitude of a single wave right this is the amplitude of a single wave but the resultant of the two the amplitude becomes higher than the resultant of the individual wave but the frequency of the resultant wave is same as the frequency of the individual wave and at the destructive points right if the amplitudes are equal this is also a and this is also a you will find that that point actually is stationary it is not moving because the energy is getting cancelled out so in a constructive interference scenario the energy gets added in a destructive uh, interference scenario the energy is cancelled right so a lot of energy redistribution happens in an interference experiment okay so this is you must know this if you want to do the sonometer experiment you want to face the viva you want to be able to answer your uh, the the examiner who comes and talks to you about a sonometer experiment you should know that there is something called as an interference which is happening in the background right so this is a general interference we have talked about what is it it's a general interference the waves are moving in the same direction is very important point of this sometimes what happens is you do this experiment in a different manner and how do you do this experiment is instead of having these two waves you know so let me just do this and show you how to do the same experiment in a very different manner now okay it is quite similar to the scenario a it is very similar to scenario a but uh you know what we are discussing is a, another way to do this interference experiment in a different manner so let's do one thing so you have this wave number 1 okay and i will draw it more uniformly than i did as compared to the previous diagram okay so let me just make it more uniform and so this is your wave and so you draw this wave you draw this wave and you draw this wave and you draw this wave and you draw this wave okay and so this is wave number 1 okay we are studying a special type of interference now why am i teaching you this because the students are getting struck in the sonometer experiment because they have no clue of class 11th if you understand the waves concept of interference and what i'm going to tell you now you will be able to do the sonometer experiment with lot of is the problem is you don't understand class 11th and therefore you find this experiment to be a very hard experiment all right 
now what i do what i do is i have another corner okay and from this corner i send a wave so so for the first wave which i've sent is in this direction okay is in this direction now what i'm going to do and let me change the color so that you can you know understand what is being done what i am going to do now is i am going to send another wave identical wave okay so it's this is an identical wave being sent from this side of the world so an identical wave is starting from this side of the world and it is moving from right to left the first one was moving from left to right so let's start sending this wave from this point and it is moving in a different direction altogether it's moving in a opposite direction right so this wave is traveling from when you have two identical waves of equal frequency so in the above experiment it was equal frequency it was here also you have equal frequency so let's say you have equal frequency so both the waves traveling in opposite direction have equal frequency so the direction wise they are not same the directions are opposite okay they are opposite moving the next is a sinusoidal wave yes they are sinusoidal waves and of course since these two waves are traveling in a wire because sonometer is a wire experiment the wire is kept under some tension and made to vibrate using an ac source it vibrates so i am assuming even this is a example of a transverse wave i will tell you how transverse waves you know, work exactly in a sonometer but we are talking a general stuff which you must understand so equal frequency waves traveling in opposite directions both sinusoidal transverse wave what happens now is such a situation results when you have again interference will happen interference will again happen but now the since the two waves are in opposite direction the the nature of interference is now called as a special type of interference and it results in generation of waves which are called as stationary waves stationary waves i will this is not the end of what i am trying to tell you there is more to this so wait because we have to learn one more concept and then when if you learn that concept only then you can do this experiment so you should know what is interference then you should know what are stationary waves and then i will tell you one more concept which is coming up now and then you will be able to understand this experiment easily if you understand what i have told you so far and what i'm going to tell you the sonometer experiment 90% of the job is done this is the key problem i faced when i was a class 11th student and class 12th student the sonometer came again and i could not solve it now stationary waves which get created okay in a wire for example you know how how what happens in a sonometer and i am going to tell you one more concept so wait this is your wire okay and this is one edge this is another edge so these are two fixed ends okay when you plug this wire plug means you pull this wire upward or downward you know what you find is the the wave is starting to move in this direction the wave moves in and and the next concept is coming now the wave is moving in this direction obviously the wave looks like a sinusoidal wave is moving like this okay and listen to this very carefully now the wave strikes the opposite side which is this and now the wave starts moving back it gets reflected can you see now when it is going back it is going back can you see this it is going back so it is like the above situation where there are two waves but in opposite direction so you can see one wave is going in this direction right you know from left to right the pink one is going from right to left these two interfere 
because they are in opposite in direction they result in what is called as a stationary wave right but that is not the uh, point i'm trying to tell you because one thing obviously you learned is that that there is a generation of uh, you know a, a wave a stationary wave by virtue of using you know this point is fixed this point is fixed so you're able to get a reflection here right so you got a reflection at this point okay and so you got a reflection at this point you get a reflection you got a reflection here right so since you got a reflection here you can see this pink wave is a ref so i was just telling you how to generate a stationary wave and i will tell you what happens in an in a stationary wave what why do we call it stationary it's a special interference it's a special interference with waves traveling in opposite direction it's a special type of interference so this is the way you generate reflection res you know is the reason why you have a opposite wave traveling you can see the reflected wave which is a pink wave which i have shown is reflected now when the pink wave reaches the you know the other side which is maybe you know this this point it again gets reflected right it again gets reflected so pink waves are coming and blue waves are going right so one more interference happens and it results in formation of one more standing wave pattern right so the stationary waves which are getting created in the string are not one type of stationary waves but multiple types of stationary waves are getting created multiple types okay now you will say uh, you know uh, what exactly is the meaning of this so if you if you go back to your class 11th you know even if you don't recall let me just tell you so the so the first wave that so so you this is clear in your mind right that you have a situation of multiple multiple standing waves getting created in a string because of this reason that you know a lot of waves are traveling back and forth so a lot of back and forth is happening one wave is coming to from left the other so a lot of interference is happening in these back and forth waves now this special you know phenomena of back and forth results in multiple interference patterns right and therefore multiple types of stationary waves get created this is a very layman way of explaining you but if you if you are in class 12 you don't recall sonometer experiment and you have a viva question on sonometer this is probably the toughest problem students have you know they are able to do the experiment they cannot explain what's happening because they have no clue how a stationary wave occurs okay now i'll tell you what what is happening in this now the stationary wave you know multiple types of stationary waves i am doing this in a very layman kind of you know approach but it's important that you understand it the layman first okay let's not get into the technicalities at the moment so let me show you the one type of uh, the stationary wave which will get created and it's very interesting this is a type of pattern you may see and i will i will i have not still told you the exact concept and gradually building the concept so listen to this very carefully once this concept is clear in your mind sonometer experiment is a cake walk so this is one type of wave pattern you will see the points which are, and this is a example of a stationary wave you know there is no movement it seems and therefore the word is stationary there is no left and right movement this point is called as a node which is a fixed point so this is also a node where 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 you see the highest amplitude right this point is called as an anti node okay so we will, we are still building the concept wait it is coming up okay now there is uh, okay so let me give you another example now another type of wave which gets generated again this is layman so that it's easy for you to understand it this is not complicated 
I'm just doing it in a very simplified way. I'm not using big words here. I'm using very small words, you know, which are uh, which will help you understand as to what it is all about. Okay. So let's say, you know, I I tell you that there is another another situation here, which is you have you know a wave pattern which looks like this. Okay. A wave pattern which looks like this. Okay, and okay, I, I think I've used square number one, two, three, and four, and the other side also have one, two, three, four. So I think this will be uniform. And this is another wave pattern which is getting generated. So you can you see now the above wave pattern, you know, there is another standing wave pattern which has got created. So when you have a wire which is you know plugged at some point plug means it is you know taken up and left it starts vibrating right and it that vibration results in these patterns in the same wire same wire has numerous patterns right this is the pattern number one this is the pattern number two let me go forward and tell you i have not used the words as yet I'm coming to that. Wait for it. Just look at this as to what is happening inside the wire. Multiple types of standing wave patterns are getting created. So if you note this, this is an anti node because the, you have a highest amplitude. This is a node. You have an anti node. You have a node. So three nodes and two anti nodes. Okay, let me make one more pattern. And I'll stop here. You can make as many patterns as you want, but there is a trick as to when this happens. And that trick is still, you know, coming up. So wait for the trick to come up. Okay, let me draw one more random pattern. So, so if this is your, this particular pattern, which is the first pattern which I've drawn, you know, is called as the fundamental frequency pattern. So this is a fundamental frequency okay don't worry about the word it's just a fundamental why is it fundamental we will talk about this this what i've done is i have drawn the diagrams of the various loops that get created in the same wire mind you these loops which you are seeing from fundamental frequency second order the fourth order the fourth order has four loops the second order has two loops and the fundamental frequency obviously has one loop so all these loops are actually getting created in single wire okay the stationary wave patterns are not visible obviously because uh, of the frequency and also because the size of the you know the later order uh, patterns or the modes is very small the amplitude the amplitude of the fundamental frequency is very high okay so you can note down you know i have what i've not drawn is a third order because third order means three uh, loops which are visible right so when i say visible i mean theoretically they may not be visible to you just remember all the loops which are visible these are standing waves loops the loops are not visible to you but get created in the same wire this is very important for you to understand all right so let's move forward and understand the concept of resonance resonance is the most important aspect of the sonograph sonometer experiment not sonograph the sonometer experiment is actually based on the concept of resonance stationary waves which get created the loops you are seeing in front of you these loops are getting created because of the condition of resonance and what is the resonance how is resonance connected to standing waves is what we will learn now so, so therefore one of the questions you can get in viva is a question of what is resonance and how is resonance connected to stationary waves so let's discuss that all right so before i start the concept of uh, the resonance and how resonance links to the stationary waves 
let me make you understand a basic thing called as natural frequency okay so let me tell you what natural frequency is if you have a wire for example okay so let me draw this wire which is stretched under tension and the source of tension can be weight you know which is there in the sonometer experiment don't worry about it but this wire is under tension now what you do is you come and you know for example you plug the wire and the wire goes upwards right using your hand you take it up and you leave it okay now the external force which is your hand that was used to plug the wire is also called as a driving force okay the driving force what will happen is that this wire will vibrate right because you plugged it vibrate it will definitely no doubt about it the problem is this vibration will be very ordinary type of vibration and it's a vibration of the wire itself so you can pluck it wherever you want to you and you will get some vibration and that vibration will result in some frequency right so any vibration has a frequency associated with it that is not a problem so whatever vibration is happening is happening at a frequency we call that frequency as the natural frequency of the wire okay of the material of the wire so everything in the world can it can be a wire it can be anything can result in a, a vibration that vibration is natural and is part of the natural frequency now if you have a special arrangement in which you have the same wire okay the same wire and the same wire is now plugged using a driving force again let's use the driving force okay so i'm using another driving force now the driving force is put in a certain manner that the driving force is given to this wire when i said driving force i mean plucking okay the plucking of the wire at a particular rhythm so driving force is provided at a rhythm at a rhythm okay so provide the driving force at a rhythm that is at a frequency which is same as the frequency of the natural frequency of the wire so every wire will have natural frequencies or many natural frequencies now you are having your hand and you are constantly you know providing it an external plucking which is the driving force at a certain rhythm you know this rhythm is the frequency at which you are plucking the wire so if the natural frequency of the wire or you know if there are multiple natural frequency any one of the natural frequency of the material which is the wire under tension here matches the frequency of the driving force the frequency of the driving force the the uh, driving force is the plucking of the wire frequency of the driving force driving force what you will find is that suddenly you will have the pattern of standing wave getting created okay so you will see multiple loops i told you the the patterns get created in the same wire so this is order number 1 the the second is order number 3 because there are three so at a certain frequency suddenly you know uh, the uh, at a ex at a certain external frequency which is equal to the natural frequency you start seeing that the wire starts moving with large amplitude a large amplitude appears which is the amplitude generally of the fundamental frequency okay so this external is the fundamental frequency uh, of the standing wave so this is a fundamental mode and this is a third order mode so you will see a large amplitude and the oscillations and the vibrations which in this case the natural case there were oscillations definitely but in the case of resonant situation when the natural frequency and the frequency of the driving force matches suddenly large amplitude appears and the wire starts moving very widely and start showing you this pattern so what is happening now resonance 
condition is happening that the the external driving force and the wire the the frequency of the driving force and the natural frequency have become one they act like as they, they are one they have become one or in simple english have become one is also called as resonance okay so we call this resonance and the resonance uh, is the condition which results in standing waves if you cannot have external frequency you know the driving frequency so for example there is a child you know on a there is a rope and as he is sitting and this you know and you push the child the child goes up and then comes back if you push the child at a certain rhythm on this this rope connected system then at a certain frequency the child's uh, this thing will start oscillating you know with a very large amplitude which is dangerous for the child that particular situation is called as resonance because the rate at which you are giving the push to the child right becomes equal to the natural frequency of the rope and the mass system on which the child swing right so this is a swing example that i gave you right so even in a swing you can have a uh, a resonance because the swing the the swing has a natural frequency and the at the rate at which you push the swing you know uh, is becomes equal to the frequency which is the natural frequency of the swing the swing starts vibrating you know at a very high uh, you know uh, uh, vibration or oscillation or amplitude it is not a normal type of oscillation so if if a wire is plugged it may show you some normal vibration but when the wire is plugged at a frequency using an ac current using a tuning fork Which, which act as a driving force. Suddenly, you will see wire getting a large, you know, uh, amplitude, which is what is the condition of resonance. I hope this made sense to you. And now, let us study the resonance and stationary wave in the context of a wire under tension for a sonometer. This was a general concept because one of the questions you can get in your viva voce is. what is a natural frequency and how is natural frequency related to the concept of resonance so you should be able to explain resonance very nicely and that is why i said this experiment is hard because a lot of class 12 students have already forgotten what is a stationary wave what is a resonance and therefore they find it very difficult to answer the viva questions okay what exactly is is happening during the phenomenon of resonance see when we talk about resonance what is happening is the wire okay this wire which you have this wire this wire has something called as a natural frequency it has a natural frequency everything in the world has a natural frequency of vibration okay now if you give it an external force or external energy if you give it an external energy at a certain frequency now this could be plucking of the wire or this wire could be connected to an ac source okay so which is an energy right so if you connect it to external energy of a certain of a frequency of a frequency okay which is equal to the frequency of the natural frequency so if the wire has a certain frequency and the external energy frequency external energy means any any other source like a tuning fork like a sine wave uh, you know alternating current which can be given to the wire you know the the so the wire is forced externally to vibrate like i plug the wire so what what you're doing is you you are when you how do you provide external energy you you impose what is called as forced vibrations okay you force vibrations on top of it you force you you have a tuning fork and the tuning fork and comes and touches the wire okay it touches the wire what is happening the tuning fork is vibrating and it touches the wire the wire also starts uh, vibrating this is an example of 
what this is an example of the forced vibration at a certain condition if the wire is if the wire has a level of tension so tension is very important in a sonometer experiment because you would have seen some weights hanging you know on the right hand side there are some weights hanging like this right so they decide the tension in the wire the tension in the wire the length of the wire the material of the wire okay the there is a concept of uh, mass density which is actually the mass per unit length of the wire all these points you know decide the natural frequency of the wire so wire has a natural frequency what does it depend on it depends on the length it depends on the mass density it depends on the tension i will tell you the all the formulas later so every wire has a natural frequency when you excite the wire okay what are we doing we are exciting the wire you can excite the wire you can go and touch the wire and the wire will start vibrating do you think by exciting the wire will you be able to produce stationary waves no the wire will not get excited to produce stationary waves if you have any any source of forced vibration it will not right only at certain frequencies only at certain frequencies only at certain frequencies which are frequencies of the external source the which is providing forced vibration only at certain frequencies you can excite the wire to produce stationary waves otherwise you cannot see the so you cannot bring any tuning fork in the world and touch the wire and say now i will see a standing wave pattern you will not be able to see you may have to bring a different type of uh, frequency of the tuning fork and then touch the wire and you and at certain frequency you will see these standing wave patterns getting produced i hope this is clear again repeating that if you want the stationary type of situation which means if you want to excite a wire under tension using this weight of a certain material and length and mass density to if you want to excite this wire to produce stationary waves you need a certain frequency to produce and excite the wire to produce stationary waves if this external excitation of certain frequency does not match the natural frequency of the wire you will not be able to excite the wire to produce any standing waves it's a waste the total energy will get wasted the external frequency which produces this type of pattern okay to start with is the natural frequency of the wire and we call it the fundamental frequency okay all other frequencies are multiples obviously i told you uh, fundamental frequency will uh, get generated this pattern will get generated pattern number 1 pattern number 2 will also get generated parallelly and simultaneously pattern number 3 pattern number 4 6 all orders will get generated so there will be no no uh, you know dearth of patterns the only condition is that you will be able to excite the wire to produce a, a stationary wave pattern only using an external source which has a certain frequency matching the fundamental frequency of the wire otherwise you will not be able to produce all right so as i told you uh, standing waves get formed because of the back and forth motion of the wave itself so let me just bring some more clarity one of the viva questions that comes is you know it's, it's the concept of velocity okay so the concept of velocity in standing waves what does it mean okay standing waves again i'm telling you sonometer experiment is definitely a class 12th experiment a lot of students are confused on the topic of the waves see the wave which travels 
in the string okay this is the two corners this is your string when you plug the string in a way that the frequency becomes equal to the natural frequency you see the first mode or the fundamental frequency like this remember the wave that no standing waves the standing waves have no velocity right because they are standing the standing waves do not have a velocity do not have a velocity if standing waves don't have a velocity then what is the concept of velocity in standing waves right now actually the velocity is always of the the traveling waves which travel from one side to another strike the other side come back which means the to and fro so the wave travels like this when you plug the string and this wave also comes back and then what happens is the formation of standing wave so the traveling waves do have a velocity traveling waves are the ones which have a velocity traveling uh, waves are the ones which have velocity standing waves on their own because they are standing don't have a velocity so if your viva question is what do you mean by velocity of wave in the context of standing waves your answer is standing waves themselves don't have any velocity but standing waves are formed because of traveling waves in opposite direction right so one is going like this the other is coming back these two waves when they interfere they result in formation of a standing waves so the traveling waves what do they do they interfere and they result in formation of a stationary wave right this is a brief explanation or a brief answer to one of the viva questions which is what is the meaning of velocity of wave standing waves is a standing wave why why do you talk about velocity and in the sonometer experiment i will come to that you know in in a string what is the velocity of the traveling wave this is something we will study i hope the concept of resonance waves that uh, i'm sorry the concept of resonance resonant frequencies that resonance uh, resonance is a phenomena that results in formation of standing wave all this is clear to you now let's convert the conversation now into some small mathematical conversation bit of mathematics will come in and we will start writing the formula of the fundamental frequency the second mode the third mode etc etc all the diagrams we had drawn you know of the loops that got created right so we will talk about that in terms of mathematics now all right so let's talk about uh, the mathematics behind the loops that we created so if you remember the first loop that you created and i'm drawing some rough diagram so don't you know worry about it so the first one which we drew was this one right the the this is called a flip flop structure okay so the the string is flip flopping flipping and flopping okay so if flipping and flopping has started in the string the string will look like this the you know so if this is one side and so this is a flip this is a flop this is the string okay at resonance condition this frequency which you see is called the fundamental frequency fundamental free frequency as you can see the this is a node this is also a node and this is an anti node the distance between two nodes the distance between two nodes is how much the distance between two nodes is lambda by 2 so lambda by 2 is equal to length of the string so length of the string also matters in the sonometer experiment you will see the value of length okay now the lambda can also be written as the velocity of the traveling wave divided by the frequency into 2 is equal to l so lambda is equal to velocity of the traveling wave divided by f so frequency is given by v upon 2l this is the fundamental frequency or the first mode this is first mode okay now let's talk about the second one okay 
द सेकेंड वन इज दिस वन ओके लेट मी जस्ट ड्रॉ टू लूप्स राइट द सेकेंड मोड सो लेट्स ड्रॉ द टू मोड्स एंड अगेन लेट्स ड्रॉ इट हैज क्लोज सो दिस इज अगेन अ फ्लिप फ्लॉपिंग विच इज है दिस इज अगेन अ फ्लिप फ्लॉप विच इज है दिस कंडीशन इज अ रेजोनेंस कंडीशन बट द मोड इज सो यू हैव एन एंटी नोड हेयर सॉरी अ नोड हेयर a node here and a node here and this is anti node and an anti node right so essentially what's happening is this is f1 now when you talk about this you have a node and a node and a node and an anti node right so this is also lambda by 2 this is also lambda by 2 obviously this lambda is not same as this lambda it's a different wavelength it's a shorter wavelength actually so lambda 2 by 2 because it's a second one plus lambda 2 by 2 is equal to l and therefore lambda 2 is equal to l and therefore velocity divided by second frequency is equal to l and therefore frequency is equal to v by l so this is your second mode right and as you can see it is double of the first mode right the second mode if you multiply this with 2 the first mode into 2 it will become the second mode so we we have also discussed the second mode let's talk about the third mode okay the third mode okay so this is your third mode we will draw three loops which are flipping and flopping again right so let me draw the first one this is the first one and then you have the second one this is the third one right so this is again a third mode so what we have done is a third mode and obviously again this is lambda 3 by 2 this wavelength is different from this wavelength is different from this wavelength it's a shorter wavelength this is also lambda 3 by 2 this is also lambda 3 by 2 so three times lambda 3 by 2 is equal to l and therefore 3 multiply by v upon f3 into is equal to so i have converted this right into so this is lambda 3 by 2 3 by 2 so let me write 2 here is equal to l so f3 is equal to l divided by v multiply by how much this will become 2 will go up right this will become 3 by 2 so this will be 2 by 3 uh times uh, vl let me just see if, if the expression is correctly mentioned yes so this is the frequency which is the second frequency okay so okay sorry so the f3 is equal to a correction here this is let me just rub this off and just corrected okay so just all right so all right so this will become f3 is equal to 3 v by 2 l so this is how much 3 times the fundamental frequency f1 so as you can see the number of loops when both the sides are fixed so this side is fixed this side is fixed so when a string is connected between two sides which are fixed and as we progress we find that the there is a spectrum of frequencies that is getting generated as the standing wave in the same string you will see this complete spectrum of frequency when i say spectrum i mean range it will you can look at f1 frequency obviously you need special instrument to see this you can see a spectrum of frequency and nth right you can see infinite number okay so a spectrum of frequency is getting generated and nth one the nth frequency is given by n times the as you can see it is 3 times so similarly n times the fundamental frequency the fundamental frequency was this so n into fundamental frequency if you have to find the fifth fifth mode just put n is equal to 5 you will get the answer so i hope the mathematics is clear to you again i am repeating 
we have not done the sonometer experiment as yet where are we focusing we are focusing first to learn what is a standing wave what is resonant frequency what is uh, the relationship between a traveling wave and the standing wave how it all so finally we are moving towards our far, you know, the destination of the sonometer experiment now let me tell you one more thing how do you observe these frequencies so what generally is done now i will give you one example the and this is directly associated with the sonometer experiment is that you have this first mode for example which is getting generated okay so what is done in the practical experiment is that this string is connected to an oscillator i'm just not giving you the exact diagram i'm just showing you it is connected to a oscillator this oscillator can be an ac oscillator okay ac oscillator this is the ac oscillator for example okay it and supposingly it can produce many frequencies you have some control you know there is a controlling knob which can change the frequency so what you do you connect the oscillator to the string this is your string right and now what you do you switch this on you will find that the string starts vibrating the string starts vibrating because you have connected it to a disturbance like a oscillator so this is a oscillator so the oscillator is now making the string oscillate so the string starts oscillating this is what the string does it starts oscillating right but this is not resonance this is not stand no standing wave will be visible so what do you do you change the you start increasing the frequency of the oscillator so assume you know you initially started with very low frequency the string was vibrating okay the string was vibrating but you could did not see this flip flop structure okay this structure which you see this structure when the string appears like this this is called a flip and a flop uh, structure so you you will not see this unless you start increasing the frequency of the oscillator after some time of a frequency of the oscillator will match the natural frequency of the string and mind you every every item everything in this world has numerous natural frequencies but they don't appear you know easily and this is the way we can make those natural frequencies uh, visible to your eyes by connecting an external so oscillator is acting as an external driving force right if you go back you will find the word driving force which is explained so the driving force is is the oscillator so you will find the flip and the flop at a certain frequency of the oscillator you will start seeing a flip and a flop okay so the flip flop will get visible the moment you see this flip flop you should immediately reach to the conclusion that you have achieved the resonance and the first resonance will be the first mode itself so you will only see one loop you know single loop will be visible single loop will be visible so resonance has happened the first uh, resonance has happened so this is the first mode which has appeared the fundamental frequency mode has appeared as soon as you see the flip and the flop i hope this is making sense to you you are able to understand what i am trying to tell you is how you practically generate this these loops so far we only did theory now we are trying to understand the formation of the loops so the first loop has happened now what you do you start increasing the frequency of the uh, oscillator again right if you for example double the frequency because you already know that the the frequency occurs in the these are also called as harmonics but we will discuss that later the fundamental frequency which is this the other frequencies of resonance are integral multiples so n is equal to 1 2 3 right this is what you need to do you double the frequency you will find the second type of structure coming in which we already know right so let me just draw a small diagram 
so this is the second two loop flip flop which will get created so you will see two loops after some time right so which means you have achieved the second mode so the natural frequencies of the string are visible to you. you can take the reading on the oscilloscope and see you know the that so you have to wait for the oscillator to disturb the you know string and then first wait for the first flip flop then wait for two loops to flip flop two loops then three loops and four loops this flip flopping uh, you know structure which you see is a is an evidence that the resonance has started and also tells you what are the natural frequencies of the string so string is a material made up of some metal it is under tension it also has natural frequencies but you cannot see those natural frequencies unless you make the string vibrate forcefully from using an external driving force like an oscillator and creating standing waves standing waves will tell you what are those uh, natural frequencies the condition of resonance is being used to take out the uh, you know the hidden natural frequencies of that string under those conditions of tension and the material used i hope this made sense as to how we produce the flip flop or stationary waves using an oscillator because in the sonometer experiment also finally you have an ac source which is nothing but an oscillator an ac source is there a wire is there and then of course you have bridges and all of that we will talk about it but gradually this is what we are doing now we are developing the concept of sonometer experiment but so far our concentration is completely class 11th unless you know class 11th you will not be able to learn anything from this uh, f uh, you know experiment about this experiment so it is important that you learn these concept concepts so that your viva preparation is very very strong and if you're watching this video and you want to revise for entrance examination uh, the concept of standing waves this is the video to watch because every concept which you have not understood for neat j ap physics or sat physics or any fifth state board or cbsc exam this is the time you can learn and revise your standing wave concept so let's move forward towards the experiment gradually and then you know uh, talk about the class 12th stuff but the class 12th ac experiment is completely based on this topic and therefore unless you learn class 11th standing wave concept you cannot learn the sonometer experiment at all you will find it hard but after listen to this video you will find it very easy all right so let's discuss the experiment now i will develop this experiment gradually we have learnt a lot about standing waves that is very clear now spending so much time on standing waves was important because you will not be able to understand this experiment without the knowledge of standing waves so let me explain you this experiment how you do this in laboratory and i will combine many concepts which we have learnt but the key concept you had to learn was resonance and standing waves that was very important if you look into this experiment you know this is the instrument which you see overall setup which is called as a sonometer okay and let me just label the diagram for your benefit this is the wire okay this is a steel wire generally steel wire or an iron wire whatever you want to use you can use iron soft iron or you can use a steel wire okay the steel wire okay now this is this this what, what you see as 220 volt right is the prime so this overall structure which you see you know this and these three lines and this six volt right so this whole structure is called as the step down transformer step down which means it converts the voltage from 220 volts to 6 volt step down transformer okay step down transformer transformer what is the job it converts the ac voltage it cannot convert dc voltage so the voltage which is coming from 220 volt side side this is the frequency we have to find the frequency of ac voltage is what we have to find 
so our aim is to find the frequency of the ac voltage right so this ac voltage comes at 220 volts the step down transformer can steps it down lowers it to 6 volts and then this voltage goes to the electromagnet so the structure you see here is the electromagnet so now this circuit is having the ac current in it when the ac current comes in this what it does okay i will just tell you what it does so let me just explain you in a more lucid manner the electromagnet is now in the center okay so which center this is called a bridge okay this is called as the bridge and this is also a bridge okay so the wire is right it is a triangular shape like this when you see the sonometer experiment it looks like this and this okay so this is a bridge in 3d and there is another bridge like this which is the second bridge and now what will happen is this wire is connected to the other side of the so this is slightly elevated because the wire is coming like this and then it goes down and gets connected back to the sonometer right so you have a you have an electromagnet the electromagnet receives an alternating current an alternating current which is generated by 6 volt what happens is this electromagnet attracts this wire a magnet can attract the iron or a steel wire this wire okay this particular sonometer wire which you see and there is also a measuring scale so you can you can see a measuring scale here right measurement scale which means it can measure how many centimeters of wire what is the length you're interested in you're interested in the length a b just let me just mark it this is a and b you're always interested in finding a b the length a b okay so this is the length you're interested in finding and how will you find it by measuring with the help of the measuring scale so you have a measurement scale here which means you know you will have marks here okay now you know uh, and of course you can see this pulley right you 11th standard concept of pulley again and then this is the weights the weight right and the weights which are generally used are you know half kg then 1 kg then 1.5 kg so 500 gram increment is done depends on your laboratory if you have 100 grams available you can add 100 grams each it depends generally i mean theoretically what is said is that your laboratory is equipped with 500 grams keep on adding 500 grams okay so this is the weight so what does weight do weight generates the the tension tries to pull the weight upward okay so there is a tension which is trying to pull the weight upwards there is a weight which is mg right and there is a static equilibrium the weight is under equilibrium there is an mg force and there is a tension here make sense right now you will say okay so what is the use of this tension okay what is the use of this producing this tension in the whole string and the same tension then travels here right so there is a tension in this string everywhere there is a tension in the string what is the use of this tension is the question i will tell you why the velocity of the transverse wave or the progressive wave you have studied the progressive wave the transverse waves which travel to and fro is dependent on this formula tension divided by the mass right this mass which you are seeing is basically the total mass divided by l which is the mass density of the wire so the wire also has a mass and a length so the overall mass density of the wire is available you know there is a total wire of sonometer how much is the mass so the velocity of the of the wave that travels in this particular wire right the velocity of that wave is given by this formula of the transverse wave that results in formation of the stationary wave please go back to the previous sections to understand how transverse waves create stationary waves so velocity is given by under root of t divided by the mass density so this is equation number one and you know 
that for the fundamental frequency where you have a flip and a flop, right? The maximum amplitude that appears in the string, the lambda by 2 is equal to the length of the string, right? So, if we have to write the velocity, we can write velocity as fundamental frequency. See, I have considered this diagram. So, the only frequency I am concerned with in, in sonometer experiment is the fundamental frequency. I am not concerned with any other frequency. And that is why one of the Viva questions is, what is the fundamental frequency? And, and all the experiments talk about fundamental frequency or the first mode. Right, so velocity of a wave can be written as f into lambda. Velocity we have found out for a string under tension. Uh, the the velocity of the wave is given by this is equal to fundamental frequency multiplied by lambda is equal to two l, and the frequency is equal to one upon two l divided by t by m. So, this is the formula you must remember. This is the base of the sonometer. If you are asked, you know, what is the formula of the sonometer experiment, right, talk about this formula. That this is called as the fundamental frequency. This is the resonating length. What is it? Resonating length, right. So, I will go back to the diagram and let me show you the resonating length. So, if you look into this diagram, this particular length, which is the length between the two bridges, okay, the length AB. So, let me use some different colors so that you can see it very simply. The length between A and B, the length between these two is the length I am referring to. This is the length, which is the resonance length or where the maximum flip-flop, the this kind of... Uh, you know, the loop is visible, right? So, the loop is visible, the length of that string or the distance between the two bridges is the length which is appearing in the formula. So, this is the length I am referring to and this is the length I am referring to. What is the tension? The tension is coming from the weight. So, if you remember, we had the weight, right? This is the weight, right? So, weight is calculated using what? Mg, right? So, this is the Mg being used. Mass density is given depending on the material, right? So, with the help of this, you are able to formula, you are able to establish that fundamental frequency f and the length are related to each other. If you keep tension in the string constant, right, fixed, and the mass is also constant, this is the expression you will get in the string for the frequency of the stationary wave that gets generated. So, the frequency of the stationary wave that gets generated is this. Okay, I hope this expression is clear. We are not talking about AC signal frequency. We are talking about frequency of the standing wave which is generated. I hope this is clear that we are not talking about the frequency of the AC voltage right now. Okay, so what happens in this experiment as I told you? The Electromagnet, this electromagnet which you see in the diagram, okay, this electromagnet makes, attracts the wire which is the string uh, with, because it has AC, right, AC. So, wire is made up of what? Wire is made up of the, wire is made up of the iron and it vibrates under the influence of the, because it gets attracted to the electromagnet. Now, if you notice, what happens is that if the frequency in, how many times does the electro, electromagnet attracts the wire? For example, the electromagnet attracts the wire 100 times in one second, right? Example, just as an example, right? It attracts it in 100 times, and this is happening at the time of resonance. So, this is the uh, happening at the time of resonance. Now, you do you know that the if the frequency of the standing wave, and if we were to relate the frequency at which the electromagnet attracts it, so this has a frequency. This has its own frequency. 
how are these two frequencies linked to each other so this is the frequency of the stationary wave which we are interested in right we are interested in the there is a relationship between these two if the if you find that the fundamental frequency for example let me say the fundamental frequency you get is 100 hertz remember because the ele electromagnet is attracting it twice in one cycle the electromagnet is attracting the wire twice in cycle therefore this is showing 100 but the but for a ac signal the the frequency is not measured you know one and two this is not the way you measure frequency of ac signal the way frequency of the ac signal is measured is this whole thing is one cycle for a stationary wave there are two cycles because it vibrates here maximum and then it vibrates when electromagnetic reach here. but for an ac signal if you see very clearly this is one frequency one one uh, cycle so one cycle is made up of two peaks okay and at each peak you find the stationary wave giving you a maximum amplitude therefore the relationship is that the frequency of ac you will calculate will be half the frequency of the stationary wave because see the electromagnet is attracting the wire twice once and twice so the wire will give you a particular frequency of maximum amplitudes right maximum amplitude may appear 100 times in one second but that does not mean the ac is 100 times uh, in one second the ac is actually only giving 50 times incidentally because ac has two maximas in one cycle therefore the frequency becomes double i hope this concept is clear in your mind because this is a very very important concept that links the frequency of the ac signal with the frequency of the standing wave this can be another viva question to you and they can ask you what is the relationship between the frequency of the standing wave and the frequency of the of the standing wave which is getting generated and prove the relationship between the two so then you may have to draw the diagram of the ac signal and and tell the examiner that we are seeing two maximas in the ac signal but for an ac signal these two maxima is only one because these appear in the same cycle that is the importance of this question and it is very difficult to articulate an answer but i hope i have been able to make you understand this listen to this many times finally you will also understand what I'm trying to convey to you. All right, so let me tell you how to do this experiment. What you do in this experiment now is that you have understood this formula. So we will use this formula in the experiment for calculations. But what is that you will measure? Let me tell you what you will measure. Let's make the chart and then start working on the experiment as to what is that you need to measure as part of this experiment. And just drawing the table so that you can understand what is to be measured in the experiment finally every experiment will have measurements right and the measurements have to be done and then after the measurement we will use the formula to calculate something and then we will decide what is the value of that something in this case we have to find the value of the frequency of the ac signal so let's say we start doing this experiment and we start calculating the values okay so let me just give you an insight as to how to do the experiment okay so first thing is you have to vary the tension in the string which is nothing but the weight which is associated if you see the diagram there is a weight on this side this is the tension okay equal to the tension so keep on adjusting the tension but i will start with one way to start with so that you can understand the experiment so we have put one weight maybe some of some value and we know the tension is now m1 g let's say we put use the weight or the mass m now what you do now start adjusting the distance between the uh, bridges so look at the bridge okay look at the bridge and start adjusting the distance between the bridges i hope you i hope you remember that right that you have to finally adjust the distance between the bridges 
right so this is the way okay so i think the diagram is uh this is where the bridge is now you can see the bridge right i hope you can see the bridge and the uh this distance which is the distance between the bridges is to be calculated this distance is the l distance right so this distance we will now we will use this value to this is the length at which the resonance happens by virtue of the weight okay so let's go back and write the value of the weight weight we have written let's calculate the length so let why i'm doing this see this calculate the resonance length where you see the flip and a flop do the experiment again okay do the experiment again with the same uh, setup okay which means you again uh, i try to bring the electromagnet right in middle okay so don't worry about it i think the diagram you can see is pretty straightforward uh, the electromagnet should be between the two bridges now do the same experiment nothing changes keep the weight as is everything same now maybe the reading of the bridges you know this reading might change a bit the uh, length so note down that length also okay so same experiment nothing changes just take the length and what you do after that is calculate the mean of these two lengths because of some error we want to reduce the error and therefore we find the mean calculate the mean what you do now is now you know so this is the first first time you did the experiment second time you did the experiment no change change in the weight calculate the mean now you know from this formula if you know the length the mean length put it in this formula so calculate frequency now using using this formula f is equal to 1 upon 2 l under root of t by m m will be given to you generally you know the 100 centimeter uh, sonometer wire its weight will be known to you so small m which is the mass density can be easily calculated i am just using 1 meter and i am assuming this is kilogram now what you do change the weight so add another weight here weight you know right weight uh, will be visible to you so add another weight here so you can see the weight right so add one more weight and make it maybe increase the weight and make it m2 right so make it m2 now the weight has gone up and the weight has gone up and write this weight here once you change the weight you will find that the resonance has vanished again adjust the distance between a and b which is the distance between the bridges oh, wait for the flip and flop to appear which is the maximum amplitude note it down again do the experiment stop the experiment switch off the ac circuit switch on the ac circuit do the experiment again measure obviously these are different readings so this l1 and l1 is not same they are different now because now the weight has changed right so the uh, the overall resonance length will change because the tension has changed now what will happen the l1 plus l2 mean again find the frequency you find frequency one here frequency two change the weight again m3g okay again you will find two values again you what you do is you find the average again you find f3 again you find m4g l1 l2 and l1 plus l2 by t and f4 so this is what is happening the weight the weight changes and you the resonance length changes the weight changes and the resonance length changes remember that so if you if you change the tension the weight is nothing but the tension right because tension is mg if you change mg length will change why because the frequency of ac is same this is not the expression of frequency of ac this is the frequency of standing wave but it is finally getting generated by the driving force which is the oscillator which is the ac ac is the one which is you know causing the electromagnet to become a magnet and that magnet is having alternating current and that alternating current is attracting the wire finally the source is the as a dynamic force which is the ac so if you change the weight 
which is mg the tension here which i am seeing right don't assume weight to be this this is mass density now do all these experiments f1 f2 f3 f4 do it maybe 5 6 times calculate the mean of all these okay f1 plus f2 plus f3 plus f4 you did the experiment 6 times take the average this will give you the frequency of the standing wave which is getting generated right these will be very close values so this value and this value will be very close this value and this value so all the values have to be very close because the source which causes the resonance which has its own frequency and it matches the frequency the natural frequency of the wire at the fundamental node a fundamental level which is the first mode i i mean the fundamental frequency that frequency cannot change therefore length and tension are the ones that have to adjust to obtain the same value so you this is the answer what you do because of the reasoning i gave you divide this by 2 you will get the frequency of the ac signal i hope this made sense to you this is the way you need to do the experiment you just need to worry about the weight adjustment and then the length adjustment between a b which is the distance between the two bridges what you need to wait for is this this flip flop to appear again the flip flop will appear here both times and you take average because you want to reduce error in the experiment why do you want to get mean right you took mean of the lens this length because you want to reduce error in the experiment i hope this is again making sense now another question that comes in this is i am going faster now because i am assuming this part is simpler and this is well understood but nonetheless i will just repeat it and and this is more formula oriented if you look into the expression of frequency and i will divide the frequency bit 2 and make it 2l because the, now i am writing the frequency of the ac signal into under root of t by m you know what is t t the tension f square will become equal to 1 upon uh, 4 square l square t by m right so this is frequency square if you look into this graph if you keep the length uh, you know if you keep the uh, for example you have to draw a graph between say you want to draw the graph between uh, the frequency and sorry you have to draw the graph between for example uh, if i were if i were to draw a graph not the frequency let's draw a graph between length square and the tension let's adjust i told you right you have to adjust length and tension so if you draw the graph and mind you this is square because of the formula right so if you draw the graph what you will get finally is that you keep on adjusting the value of t so for example t starts from some value you start the experiment from here what you will get is this okay you start with some weight and then keep on adding weight what you will get for example you add another another weight then another weight then another weight then another weight so what you will finally get are these coordinates okay these these are the coordinates you will get and if you notice this equation you know what you will find is f square which is a constant the frequency of ac signal is constant into 16 into l square is equal to t by m so l square is equal to t divided by 16 f square m understood so what is happening 16 is fixed frequency of the signal is fixed the mass density of the wire is fixed so l square is proportional to directly proportional to t all right so you understand now that the l square is proportional to t so what what did i why did i do this because i wanted to convey that l square can be written as uh, of you know equation of line because it's a straight l square is proportional to k into t where k is nothing but 1 by 16 f square multiply by m i hope this is making sense this particular part okay the k part is the slope of this line so slope of this line m right generally slope is written as m the slope 
which I am referring to as k is 1 upon uh, 16 into the right 1 upon uh, no hold on so if if i were to write uh, the slope as if if i calculate the slope of this graph which is you know uh, using the angle tan theta this angle then the tan theta is the slope then tan theta is equal to i can write this as equal to 1 upon 16 f square m i know the slope from uh, i can get a d and measure the slope uh, which means i can measure the angle then go to the tan table measure the tan theta and and i can write this equal to the slope right so you what do you do so slope and so 16 is known slope is known m is known so we can find f square is equal to 1 upon 16 tan theta into m right because we know the slope. So, we can find the frequency of this particular signal even using the slope of the graph. So, if e, so, this is another way. So, there are two ways you will calculate the frequency. One, of, of course, is this table, right, in which you use the formula. So, this, these frequencies are getting calculated using this formula. The second is you plot a graph between L square okay l and the tension respective tension so do the square of this mean length do the square of this mean length okay the square of this mean length and then you know plot a graph between t and the, in and the square of the length so this is the graph plot all these points okay Obviously, they will not start from 0 because there is no length. There has to be an initial length. So, this is not 0. The 0 is probably here. And the actual axis may be somewhere here. Okay, So, the actual axis may belong to this place. And, and, and I have drawn this line for, for you so that you can understand it nicely. But these points actually reside here. Okay, So, the, the length which is the first length corresponds to this point the second is here the third is here and the fourth is here and the fifth is here right i hope this brings clarity in your mind that this is not the axis the axis is here so measure the frequency using graph measure the frequency using the what using the uh, formula right compare the two okay compare the two using the formula and using the slope method which i have just explained right so so i hope this brings more clarity in your mind when it comes to doing the experiment now let me tell you the problems in the experiment which happen okay this is very important some of the problems that happen in the experiment is that this pulley you know should be a frictionless pulley this pulley should be frictionless okay but sometimes what happens is this pulley is not frictionless but has some friction now, what happens because of that is the tension in the string changes. You have taken tension so far to be equal to mg. T is equal to mg. This is the logic you are working on. The tension is equal to mg. But this logic may go wrong a bit because of the uh, friction that exists in the pulley. Another problem that you may face uh, while doing, doing this experiment is the problem that the AC source you are using, okay, the AC source you are using, which is this 220 volts, the frequency of this uh, AC source may not be good frequency. So, this, this particular frequency, which you see here, you know, may alter. Sometimes the supply side frequencies are not good. The frequencies that come in our house, for example, from the electricity board, the quality of frequency we think it is 50 hertz but even that may be fluctuating right so these are the sources of error in the experiment a poor quality frequency and a pulley which is the uh, which is not frictionless it has friction so the weight also goes wrong two major sources of problems another question your examiner can ask you will this experiment happen if we apply a dc voltage will not happen because 
in a dc voltage the attraction of the wire will not happen the electromagnet will not work and therefore will fail to generate any standing wave because it will not attract the wire twice in one cycle okay so these are the important questions that you must understand must memorize because these are very important for your viva i hope i have covered almost all the questions for the viva but if you still have some questions left please feel free to ask those questions in the comment section thank you very much for your time